This is a piece of ancient Roman concrete. On the outside, it looks quite similar to the concrete we see everywhere today, but behind the scenes, it's completely different. Unlike our modern concrete, which crumbles in just a few decades, Roman concrete survived for nearly 2,000 years, and during that period, it even healed its own cracks and holes and became stronger over time. An ingenious discovery that can still be seen today in Rome's most iconic landmarks, from the Colosseum's gigantic structure to the meandering aqueducts that cut across the European countryside. Romans back then didn't truly understand the seemingly magical material they had invented. In fact, no one else in history was able to fully replicate its durability and self-healing. Roman concrete remained an ancient mystery for over 2,000 years. But now, with modern microscopic analysis and science-backed research from MIT and other universities just two years ago in 2023, we're able to fully explain its genius design. So what secret did the Romans know? How did they use that secret to build some of the greatest architectural feats on Earth? And why might it hold the answer for us today to build structures that might last thousands of years, or maybe even forever? If you take a close look at the Colosseum, you'll notice the pale, off-white arches and beams are more than just plain stone. Beneath the outer layer is the very concrete recipe that made it possible to construct such a massive, freestanding amphitheater almost 2,000 years ago. Across the empire, that same recipe allowed the Romans to build aqueducts that carried fresh water for miles, vaults that spanned marketplaces, and of course, the Pantheon's colossal dome, still the largest unreinforced concrete dome on Earth. Inside these structures, you'll see the jagged stones embedded in the pale gray substance. To the naked eye, it doesn't look all that different from concrete holding up our sidewalks and highways today. And yet, we know it's different. These walls have nearly survived 2,000 years of earthquakes, rain, and in sometimes direct bombardment. While modern concrete often struggles to make it past a single century. So what is hiding inside this material that makes it so remarkably durable? The secret of Roman concrete remained just that, a secret. It wasn't even that people had forgotten the recipe though. The Roman architect Vitruvius in the first century BCE wrote about mixing lime with volcanic ash to form Roman concrete, describing in his famous book De Architectura how builders should mix lime with volcanic ash called pozzolana. Romans during this time even noted that when used near the sea, the mix would harden into a single stone that becomes stronger every day. This quote is by Pliny the Elder, a Roman naturalist. The recipe sounded simple enough, and yet, when later builders in Middle Ages and Renaissance tried to follow these instructions, the results fell flat. The structures cracked and eventually collapsed. This repeated failure by predecessors in neighboring regions gave rise to the idea that Roman concrete was a lost art. The ingredients were well known, but the hidden strategy behind its longevity had long slipped away. Across Europe, engineers stood before massive ruins harbors that had resisted waves for centuries, and domes that dwarfed anything built since, and wondered why their own recreations crumbled in decades. Napoleon's own engineers even surveyed ancient aqueducts and harbors during his campaigns in Italy, carefully documenting their design. But despite the scientific curiosity of the age, there is no evidence that anyone could reproduce the extraordinary endurance of the Romans' concrete. By the 1800s, the mystery of Roman concrete still remained unanswered, and people had shifted their focus to other products already. Modern industry had embraced a new invention, Portland cement, created in 1824 by Joseph Aspin. This was a powder made by heating limestone and clay at very high temperatures until they formed clinker, a stony residue that when ground into a fine powder became cement. Portland cement was fast, strong, and easy to mass produce. The perfect invention for railroads, bridges, skyscrapers, and dams that now had to scale thousands of miles and cover millions of people. But before we compare this to Roman concrete, let's break down what this innovation actually means so we can see its pros and cons. Cement by itself is not concrete. Cement is a glue, a reactive powder that hardens when mixed with water. When you take the cement and combine it with sand and water, you get what is called a mortar. Mortar is the paste used to bind bricks and stones together. 
It's strong in compression, but not meant to hold up by itself in large volumes. Concrete, on the other hand, is mortar with aggregates added, chunks of gravel, sand, or crushed stone that give the mixture bulk and stability. Think of cement as the glue, mortar as the paste, and concrete as the final building material, a composite of glue and rock. This modern concrete, made with Portland cement, had large advantages. It hardened very quickly, it could be poured into molds, and it could also reach very high compressive strengths. But with this came a fatal flaw. Over time, Portland cements developed tiny micro cracks. Because the material is brittle, those cracks slowly expand, and once they form, nothing inside the concrete can stop or heal them. That's why we add steel reinforcement, or rebar, to the modern concrete, to help it handle the tension and hold the structure together, even as cracks form. But when water and salt reach that steel, it corrodes it, and the concrete begins to fall apart. That's why so many modern structures struggle to last more than 50 to 100 years without major repairs. The Romans possessed a technology that didn't have these negative properties, but the proof of that was still hiding inside their ruins, waiting for modern science to uncover it. Our investigation into this material began in the 20th century, when scientists drilled cores out of Roman harbor walls piers and breakwaters that had stood for more than 1,500 years. What they found there was truly incredible. Modern concrete exposed to this salt water often begins to break down within decades. Yet, these Roman harbor walls were still rock solid. This was actually the first major clue, and in 2013 and 2017, Marie Jackson and her team at the University of Utah published groundbreaking studies in American Mineralogist and American Journal of Archaeology. Using advanced microscopy and chemical analysis, they discovered that seawater was not the enemy of this type of concrete. Rather, it was actually a part of the strengthening process. Over centuries, seawater interacted with the volcanic ash and the Roman mix and triggered the growth of rare minerals called toboromite and philipsite. Toboromite might sound like a strange word, but it's actually a rare, naturally occurring mineral made of calcium, silicon, oxygen, and water. It forms long, needle-like crystals that are incredibly strong at the microscopic scale, almost like natural steel rebar woven through the concrete. In fact, even in modern cement research, synthetic toboromite is prized for its strength, but it's really difficult and expensive to make in the lab. The Romans, by accident or intentional design, had created conditions where seawater would grow toboromite, a strong reinforcement inside their walls over time. Philipsite was another mineral found in the volcanic rock. In Roman concrete, it acted like a chemical trigger. When seawater entered the pores of concrete, philipsite helped rearrange the atomic structure of the mix, encouraging the growth of even more toboromite. The result of these two interacting elements created the self-repairing structure. It became the concrete that didn't weaken in salt water, but actually regenerated itself. It turned into a harbor wall that wasn't eroded by the sea, but actually fed by it. This research solved a critical piece of the mystery, why Roman concrete became stronger with age near the sea. But in reality, it didn't explain everything. Roman concrete on land, used in aqueducts, domes, and the Colosseum, also endured for millennia. But these structures weren't constantly exposed to seawater, so how did they resist cracks and weathering? The search for this answer went on for nearly half a decade. Then the answer came in a groundbreaking study in 2023, just two years ago. In 2023, Admir Mazik's team at MIT published a paper in Science Advances titled Hot Mixing, Mechanistic Insights into the Durability of Ancient Roman Concrete. They noticed something most people had overlooked. In many Roman samples, the mortar contained bright white chunks called lime clasts. For years, scholars thought these were mistakes, evidence of sloppy mixing. After all, lime was supposed to dissolve evenly into the mortar and modern concrete. But what if these chunks weren't flaws at all, but rather the key to its success? To understand the process and formation of the lime clasts, let's take a look at their chemistry. Lime is simply calcium oxide, made by heating limestone at high temperatures. When water is added, it then becomes calcium hydroxide, or slaked lime, which
which is usually what is used in the even paste of modern mortars, and hence concrete. But the MIT team found evidence that the Romans actually skipped that step. They used quicklime directly in the mix, creating what is termed hot mixing. The reaction released intense heat, so much that parts of the mortar actually fused together and left behind these chunks of lime glass. Still though, just by looking at it, lime glass seemed just like unmixed chunks of material. But within its structure, it held the key to the Roman concrete's self-healing properties. When a crack eventually formed in the concrete, water would seep in and dissolve these lime glass releasing their components, specifically calcium ions. Those ions would then recrystallize as calcite, basically another natural cement, sealing the crack entirely shut. To prove this theory, Mazik's team recreated the Roman process in their lab. They made one batch of concrete with slaked lime, or the type we used in modern mortars, and another with quick lime, the one with lime clasts in the mix that Romans used. Then, they deliberately cracked both samples and added water. After multiple trials, the secret behind the self-healing concrete was finally confirmed. The cracks in the modern style mix stayed open, but in Roman concrete mix, the cracks healed themselves in just two weeks. What looked like a sloppy mistake was actually an ingenious self-repair mechanism, and it is what allowed the most influential buildings of Roman history to survive and thrive to this day. This paper effectively solved the mystery. We know the Roman secret wasn't luck or magic or even a lost recipe. It was simply chemistry and engineering, centuries ahead of its time. But what does this mean for us? And why don't we use it today? We in the modern civilization run on concrete. It's the most widely used building material in the world, second to only water in terms of human consumption. Skyscrapers, highways, bridges, dams, ports, all of them depend on it. But there's a hidden cost. Concrete is also one of the most fragile pillars of modern life. Many of our structures are designed for lifespans of just 50 to 100 years. Repairs are ever going, failures are quite expensive, and when concrete breaks, it often breaks catastrophically. There's also a deep environmental price. Producing Portland cement, the key ingredient in modern concrete, requires heating limestones to extremely high temperatures, releasing enormous amounts of carbon dioxide. In fact, cement production alone accounts for about 8% of global CO2 emissions. Every time we demolish and rebuild, the problem will only get worse. This is where Roman concrete, instead of being a relic of the past, could be our guide for the future. If we could build structures that lasted not decades, but centuries, or even millennia, we could drastically reduce the need for repair, replacement, and emissions. Like coastal defenses against rising seas that don't crumble in a generation, but endure for hundreds of years. Or bridges and tunnels that don't need constant patching because their very material is capable of sealing its own cracks. In fact, some researchers are already experimenting with modern self-healing concretes, inspired by the Romans. At Delft University of Technology, Heng Junkers developed a living concrete by mixing dormant bacteria sealed inside tiny capsules. When cracks appear and water seeps through it, the bacteria wake up and produce limestone, patching the damage from within. At Cambridge, another team has tested microcapsules filled with minerals that burst open when stress creates fractures, sealing them much like the lime class in Roman walls. Even companies like Basilisk are now selling self-healing concrete for roads and tunnels proving the idea can work outside of research. The challenge, of course, still, is scaling this process. The biggest reason we don't simply copy Roman concrete today is that it was tailored for massive compression-heavy structures like arches, domes, and sea walls. Our modern world needs thinner, faster-setting concrete for skyscrapers, highways, and bridges. Reproducing the Roman system exactly might not fit our needs, but the principles of building for longevity or designing chemistry that continues to work long after construction could transform how we think about sustainable infrastructure as a whole. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe so my future videos get pushed to you. Anyways, thanks for watching.